This is the finished project. This is an AT Mega 48 microcontroller attached to a computer through the USB port and it's bit banging the USB protocol with support from the VUSB platform. It's drawing power from the USB cord as well and uh, you can see the data lines, the green and the white, go through some resistors to a few pins and I've got a 12 megahertz crystal right there powering the whole thing. So that's all of the circuitry involved. The black wires go through this ribbon to interact with the display of the frequency counter. It's actually reading the multiplexed display, and by multiplexed I mean only one character is illuminated at a time, and it goes in, in very rapid succession. And if I shake the camera, you can probably see some of the flickering of the display. That's because only one character is illuminated at a, at a time. So the microcontroller is fast enough to determine which character is illuminated, read its value, store it in a little bit of memory, and then send it to the computer whenever I ask for it. The black cables interface directly to the, to the board in a pretty simple manner. So the signals go from the black cable to the microcontroller through the USB cable back there into the computer. And a Python script is pulling the device every second. On the left is how many seconds it's been since the program ran. And on the right is the frequency in megahertz. Now I'm going to demonstrate how the data actually runs through to the PC. Uh, you can see I have it set to update every one second and the computer is going to pull the device every one second. If we go here to the screen, you can see the value being read 9.913 megahertz. At the very end, that last digit is not significant. It's not illuminated on the display, so it's just set to be a zero. So that has to be accounted for in software if you go back and forth between below 10 megahertz and above 10 megahertz where you need this extra figure. But that's something we can work out later. I will unscrew the screw of my permeability tuned oscillator. And as I do that, you'll see the voltage, the voltage, the uh, frequency drop. We are around 9 point something. I'm unscrewing it a lot. So it's going to about 9.89. And I'll screw it back in. And it will rise. Nine point one, nine point three. I'll try to get to like nine point eight maybe. Okay. So you have a pretty good idea of how it works. I'll take it back a little bit. So all that time the data was being logged in the computer through the USB port. You can see where it dropped to the lower nines and then it came back up. That data is being stored in a CSV value so it can be easily looked at in Excel or graphed but I prefer to graph it with Python. So here is a graph of the frequency versus time. Frequency is on the vertical axis and time is in seconds on the horizontal axis. You can see it was pretty steady until I dropped the frequency and then I guess there was a point where as I unscrewed the screw it wasn't doing any more and then I increased frequency again and then at the very end, do you remember I backed off a little bit? And that's what we're looking like now. So every data point is one second of time. And if I graph this over hours or even days of time, I'll have a pretty unique frequency display of whatever device I hook up to. So I'm quite satisfied. I probably have to improve the quality of the enclosure and make it a little bit prettier. But I would say functionally, I accomplished my goal.